What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell and in today's video we're covering one of the best openings in all of chess with the Karl Khan. It's a response against e4 in which case we're not going to play d5 right away which by the way this is Scandinavian but instead we're going to play this move of c6 looking to support this d5 push right and today's video is really going to be dedicated to white's three main options including what happens if white just defends the pawn on e4 right plays a move like knight c3 what happens if white goes into the advanced variation and also how do we respond if white goes into the exchange followed by the panov attack with c4 or if they just take on d5 and then just naturally develop what do we do in that situation let's first take a look at this move of knight c3 now i must warn you guys a lot of these lines i'm going to show aren't the main lines right a lot of openings, like the Sicilian Night Orf, all that kind of stuff, I really do try to stick to the book. But guys, with the Karl Khan, I personally don't like some of the main lines. Let's start out with one of them here. Taking on e4, and then playing this move of bishop f5. This is the main move, okay? And it, look, if you like this move, you enjoy it, go for it, right? There's a ton of master and grandmaster players that rock with bishop f5, but I personally never liked it. In fact, this exact variation is why I quit the Karl Khan back in my tournament days because I can't tell you how many times I would see this idea of knight g3, right, kicking my bishop back, and then white just going into the main line of h4 followed by h5. And look, white can just trade off bishops whenever they want. We have to take back. Here we play a move like e6, knight f6, and bishop e7. This is the main line, okay? Look it up. Main line, if you go to the master database on chess.com, you're going to see a ton of of games in this position. I personally just don't really like it for black, okay? Now, some argue that black does have an advantage in the end game because of pawn structure, and that could be true. H5 is a potential target, but that being said, H5 is very annoying, right? In fact, as black, I'd much rather have that pawn on H2. It's taken up a ton of space, and it's pretty well defended at the moment. On top of that, look at the development that white has, right? We have three pieces developed. It's white's move, and they currently have six pieces developed. They have a centralized pawn that's not even isolated, taken up squares like e5 and c5, knight e5 jumps on the way potentially. I just never felt comfortable here and I never felt like I could really fight for a win, right? In a position like this, here white is looking at ideas like c4 and c5 potentially. Black is looking to play c5 or e5 breaking through in the center. Again, you can play this if you want, but I personally was not a big fan of it. So going back to this knight takes e4 move, I recommend this idea of knight f6, okay? Very playable. This has been played a ton at the master and grandmaster level as well. We're simply attacking this knight on e4. Notice if this knight does try to run away to a square like g3, we're the ones that can take up some space with h5, right? Looking to play h4, kicking this knight back to e2 if white's not careful. The best move here for white is h4, and against that we play g6. Very solid structure here for black. Bishop g7 on the way, and I like this position a lot more for black. I just feel like, you know, the development is a lot more even, and on top of that, we have a solid structure. We didn't really lose anything in the process, and we gained some space. I think this is a better situation for black. And yes, g5 is weak for sure when we do play h5 and g6, but at the same time, g4 is currently a weakness right and if white ever plays f3 trying to solidify that square well g3 f2 you know all the really all the dark squares become extremely weak on the king side of the board so again black has a lot to play for going back to this move knight f6 usually you won't see this move knight g3 though right in which case you have the option of just throwing your pawn down the board like crazy with h5 and h4 kind of reversing what white usually does against the Karl Khan. And here white will usually just take on f6, right? Here you can take with the g-pawn. Usually I recommend taking towards the center, but in this scenario, I actually like just taking with the e-pawn, right? Because our bishop can get developed much more rapidly to d6. And here we can play a move like castling kingside. Look, if you want to castle, we're going to play bishop g4. We have a very active bishop here on d6 and g4, pinning the knight on f3 to the queen on d1. Some of you may be wondering, wait, what if white plays a move like h3, right? It may seem as if white is trying to lock out our light squared bishop, and they are but they're underdeveloped, right? This king is still on e1 and we're castled. So in a situation like this, we got to throw in a check, right? Throw in a check against the king. Obviously white cannot castle when they're in check. So here they got to, you know, try to figure something out. They play bishop e2. We can play queen e7 and keep adding the pressure against that minor piece. And here, if we move like bishop e3, let's not waste time. Let's play bishop f4, right? At this point in time, we have two attackers on e3. White only has one defender. And if white puts another defender on it, okay, we play queen e7. I'm taking black here. 
any day of the week. See how that covers what to do against knight c3, right? It's pretty simple. Honestly, I just recommend taking on e4 and then playing knight f6. If you face knight g3, throw your h pawn down like crazy. And if they take on f6, take back with the e pawn naturally develop and really go after the white king if white refuses to castle quickly, right? What about the advanced variation? of e5 well again bishop f5 is very popular and look maybe i'm just a hater okay maybe i am but i just don't like it okay at the end of the day i just don't like this move for black at least in my own games i always feel like this bishop is just kind of awkwardly placed it's easy for white to try to trap it with a move like h4 with the tall variation i just don't see how this is fun for black right right now white is threatening to play g4 and h5 trapping the bishop notice that e4 is also going to get trapped by f3 so g4 is a big threat and here black can play a move like h6 right giving the bishop an escape score or just playing h5 and trying to stop g4 all that to say i kind of feel like this bishop is just a sitting duck right white can trade off whenever they want and at the moment it's kind of just staring down at the pawn on c2 with white getting kingside expansion so going back i really don't recommend this move for black a ton on top of that guys let's just imagine white plays knight f3 right let's just say they don't play h4 well still i, I just never felt comfortable with this bishop right you know we, we develop our knights we play a move like h6 i always just felt awkward here i didn't really know what this bishop was trying to do so going back to this position in which case white plays e5 again i'm personally not a big fan of bishop f5 instead i really like this option of g6 very underrated move not played very often but if you look at online chess look up the lead chess database black performs extremely well with this g6 move and i myself have actually started playing the carl con more lately because of it what is the idea here well again i personally don't like a bishop just kind of sitting out here on f5 doing not much but you know besides the fact of just trying not to get trapped Instead, what we're going to try to do here is play g6, and the moment we see knight f3, trade this bishop off, right? Trade the bishop off, put a pawn on e6, and even play h5, right? This may look kind of crazy, but notice this beautiful pawn structure. All pawns on light squares, and notice we have a dark squared bishop, which is exactly what we want, right? We want a bishop that can't even see that the pawns are there. It's going to give us a more active minor piece. In this situation, we don't really want a bishop on c8 because it's going to be so, you know, just so inactive. A bishop on f8 is very strong, though. And let's say here white plays a move like c4. Are we going to take this pawn? No. No no reason to react. This is only going to give white more targets on the queen side. Instead, we're just going to play a move here like knight h6. Notice I didn't play knight e7 because of bishop g5 pinning the knight to the queen. And that bishop would also be looking at f6, right? This is just not fun for black. So instead, we're going to play knight h6 looking to bring this knight to f5 right we're not just bringing this knight here because it looks good here we're trying to get this knight to a square where it can really attack that pawn on d4 which our queen is already looking at right if white takes on d5 okay we'll take back with the c pawn continue developing knight f5 we got two minor pieces really hunkering down on the centralized pawn queen b6 on the way and black here with an extremely nice and playable game See how really this g6 move, again, not very often played, but I do think it has some really nice ideas. If you do see knight f3, play bishop g4, trade off e6, put all your pawns on light squares, maybe even h5, develop your pieces, get that knight to f5, you're going to be in business. What about a move like bishop g3, right? This happens to me quite a bit. White goes, you know what? I don't really want to let this bishop develop to a square like f5, and I don't want to let this bishop pin my knight on f3 right so here white's playing bishop d3 what they want you to do is play a move like e6 eventually right but notice there's a key difference here our bishop before was traded off we had more space in this situation this bishop is really just a tall pawn right it has a very sad future it's not really doing hardly anything at all at the moment in fact if you put it on d7 i you know if you told me it was upon our bishop i couldn't even really tell the difference in that kind of situation because of what it's doing right so okay going back to bishop d3 we're not going to play e6 right we cannot play e6 here because our bishop is going to suffer for the rest of the game and if our bishop suffers so will the rest of our queen side pieces instead we're going to play this move of h5 this is a key idea guys against the advanced playing g6 and h5 right and a lot of these other variations in which case we play bishop f5 right away white is able to make a ton of space but we're the ones that make space here and then here we're going to play knight h6 followed by bishop f5 right we now play bishop f5 and because we have space i think that this is a much better version for black you want to take on f5 okay we'll capture here right you want to take on h6 okay we'll capture off your bishop nice little intermediate move there for black and going back by the way guys i just wanted to mention white's tried really hard right to not let us play bishop g4 right i mean if we play bishop g4 right now white can just kick us out but again this is really the key square that we're looking at especially 
when we see a knight on e2. It's going to be nearly impossible for white to stop this bishop, especially with the knight on h6, from coming to either f5 or g4. At that point, it's up to you on which one you want to put it on. See how, again, if white plays something quiet like bishop d3, we don't want to play e6, right? We don't want to do that. Instead, we got to play h5, right? Looking to play knight h6, helping support either bishop f5 or bishop g4. What happens here, though, if white plays this move f4? I can't tell you how often I see this. This happens all the time in my games, but this is actually one of my favorite moves to play against. It makes the game very easy and simple for black. Again, we're taking up space with h5, right? We're not playing passive. Got to play h5 and really try to control both of these key light squares, right? Okay, let's say white here plays a move like knight f3. We're going to play knight h6, as always. And here in this kind of situation, you have a couple of different options. Bishop g4 is totally playable if you want to try to just trade off your bishop. I personally am a fan in this situation of bishop f5, right? Just offering up a trade. And notice here of castling kingside, I'm not going to take on d3. If I do this, white is going to get more development. Instead, I'm going to keep the tension here and just play a move like e6. Right. You play something like c3, we can now play c5, start putting pressure on that center. And whenever white does take on f5, okay, we capture back. Big chillin' again. d4 is under a ton of pressure moves like knight c6 and queen b6 potentially on the way. See, I'll go on back. We've covered two moves so far, right? First off, knight c3, in which case I recommend taking on e4, and then just playing knight f6, right? And secondly, the advanced variation. I really like g6 followed by h5 and knight h6. These are really the three key moves that you got to play against the advance if you do go with g6 and against that i think that white has a lot of different things that they got to sort out what happens if white goes into the exchange variation with e takes d5 right and once we capture back there's a couple of different options one of them is the panov attack with c4 okay this is an option that really does well for white at a lot of different levels and we're going to cover what to do against this but first off what happens if white just plays quietly right what if they just develop with a move like bishop d3 in this case there's a very specific setup that I recommend. First off, we're going to play knight c6, right? Put some pressure on d4. And the moment that this knight comes to f3, we're going to play bishop g4 yet again, pinning that knight to the queen, keeping an eye on this pawn on d4. And here, if I play a move like c3, I'm a big fan of queen c7, okay? This is the computer line. And on top of that, it performs extremely well. It really does two things. First off, it keeps an eye on f4, right? So this bishop, this dark squared bishop, isn't going to be able to come to f4 anymore. And on top of that, it's looking at the pawn on h2. Why does this matter? Because we're going to play a very quick e6 and bishop d6. At this point in the game, let's just say white messes around with something like a3. We're going to take on h2, right? Notice the knight cannot capture back because we win the queen. So going back, the moment we play bishop d6, we're simply threatening to win a pawn. White here has to play a move like h3, in which case we're simply going to drop the bishop back. And now against rook e1, I recommend knight g e7. Now this may seem a little bit strange. A lot of you may be wondering why knight f6 isn't played. Well, let's cover it, right? Let's look at this move knight f6. This seems okay, but I do think that it offers black some issues. First off, what happens here if white plays a move like knight f1? Now white is wanting to bring this bishop to g5. Very active square for that bishop, putting some pressure on our knight. And if we try to stop the bishop from getting there... This does lock out the bishop, right? We stop the bishop from coming to g5 and f4 as well. But now white plays this move of g4. And notice this bishop here simply doesn't have any support except for the pawn on f7. And now when we capture back, the rook flies in. Again, y'all, this is just not good, right? There's no way around it. f7 is a very important pawn. And when we take on g6, e6 gets taken. We have an isolated pawn on d5. Black's position is falling apart. So going back, whenever I do see the move like rookie one i'm a big supporter of this move of knight g7 right because now we can play this move of h6 which prevents the bishop from coming in which is great right we want to keep this bishop on a very inactive square like d2 or e3 and now if you do play g4 bishop g6 is ready to go right because now the knight is supporting that minor piece now we're looking at moves like knight f4 in the future and white here is simply overexposed with this pawn chain in front of the king See, I'll go on back again. If white just, you know, plays natural, develop them all chess, I recommend the setup of a knight on c6, queen on c7, and bishop on g4, and then just continue development. And most of the time, I think knight g e7 is a great option for black, right? Because it really supports key squares such as g6 and f5, both of which are very important to our light squared bishop. What happens here, though, if white goes into the Panov attack with c4? Now, look, there's a ton of different options here for black. I really had a hard time deciding which one to cover. But I'm going to cover what I think gives Black the most comfortable game and the move that I don't like playing against. I do play the Panov attack as white. 
And I think my least favorite line to go against is knight f6 followed by e6. It's just a very solid setup. It doesn't give white a ton to work with. Notice here, if white plays a move like c5, this may seem a little bit scary, right? White here is making up space, and this is a good move, but there's no need to panic. For a couple moves, we're just going to develop, right? We're going to play a move like bishop e7 and castle kingside, but we can't wait around forever. Now that our king is safe and out of the center, we can't play passive moves here, like knight c6, bishop g7, bring the rook out, right? If we give white too much time, they're going to have a crazy queenside expansion. Instead, we got to go after this pawn chain right away with b6. If you take on b6, I capture back with the queen, black's chilling. If you play a move like b4, we're playing a5, whole idea being... If you do take on a5, we're going to take back on c5, right? And, uh, okay, I mean, this is just much better for black. We have c takes d4 ideas, c4 ideas. This pawn on a5 is really just hanging and attacked by two different major pieces. And white here is just very uncomfortable. Black has a minus 1.3 advantage, according to my computer engine. Going back, right? Let's say white doesn't take on a5, but instead they play this move of c takes b6. Well, in this case, we're going to take on b4 with tempo against the knight, looking to capture back. And if you try to hang on to b6, okay, let's attack the defender even more. Bishop d7, we're threatening to win this knight now with a bishop and a rook aimed directly at it. Something like knight c5, no no need to panic, right? No need to take this knight because this is only going to help white. Just take the pawn off on b6. Black here, again, very comfortable and simply up a pawn. So y'all, moves like c takes b6 and b takes a5 are both not very good. And I also wanted to mention that a3 here isn't very good either, okay? Because yes, white does hold onto their pawn chain quite well, but they lose their rook, okay? I don't think many people are going to argue that saving one pawn is worth losing one of their two rooks. So y'all, all I have to say, right, bishop e7, castle king side, if you do see a move like c5, and then after that you got to really quickly play b6 and a5 if needed, and here, white's position can fall apart if they're not careful. The best move here is knight a4, which the computer still has an advantage for black after knight bd7. At this point, we're going to start capturing off on b4 and c5, really try to undermine white's over-advanced position, and also look at e5 breaks in the future, right? whole idea being if we play e5, this d pawn is going to be distracted from the pawn on c5, which is going to make white's pawn structure that much weaker. And I also want to mention that this move of c6 is not some saving grace for white, right? I mean, we're not going to play knight b8, right? Because then white plays b5, and so we're going to play the intermediate move of bishop takes b4. Check. Thank you for the pawn. We're then going to play a move like knight b8 and pick this guy off. Black yet again with a huge edge. So y'all going back, if you do see a move like c5, get your king castled quickly and then play an immediate b6 followed by a5 if you do see the option of b4 from white put as much pressure as you can on the white camp and you're just going to be playing some good chess what about a move like knight of three right what if white just kind of takes a more casual approach well in this case we can play something like bishop b4 right play active bishop e7 is also playable but I, I personally think that bishop b4 is a little bit more aggressive if you want to take on d5 we'll capture back with the knight if you play something like bishop t3 now that the bishop has moved we're then going to take on c4 notice guys i did not play this move of d takes c4 right away because this bishop just captures back, right? Instead, I played this move of bishop b4, right? Just trying to get some development. And then once this bishop moved, I then captured on c4. Whole idea being that, well, they just wasted a turn, right? They have an isolated pawn, meaning that there's simply no pawns in this position that can help support it going forward. And at this point, okay, let's castle kingside, play a move like b6, bishop b7 on the way. And y'all know what I'm going to say. We're just playing chess. Hey, I wanted to finish this video out by giving a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of January in 2023. Love you guys and appreciate the support a ton. If you haven't checked out the Patreon before, there's a lot of exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member, and I hope to see you over there.